evoke you with gradual replenishment. In this model, the assumptions that we made for the basic evoke you model, almost all of them are the same. Only this assumption is relaxed. In the basic evoke you model, we had assumed that replenishment happens instantaneously. Now we relax the assumption and we say that replenishment is permitted to happen gradually, uh, linearly over time. That is the inventory uh, gets replenished with the ordered quantity over a time period and not at one instant of time. As a result, the schematic diagram changes as follows. In the basic EvoQ model, we had a vertical line which represented the addition of the ordered quantity to the inventory, but now we have a sloping line. So you can see that when the demand depletes the existing inventory and makes it zero, the ordered quantity arrives and it's, it gets added, uh, it gets added at a rate and this uh, rate of addition we will just have a look in a moment, but that is not instantaneous, it happens over a period of time. So demand rate is D as before, that's the ongoing consumption, P is the rate of replenishment, whenever production happens, whenever a quantity is ordered, after some initial lead time or setup time, the production begins. A production or arrival of the inventory happens and then the inventory is continuously added over some time uh, at a rate of P. Okay. Now, even as the inventory is added, even as the ordered quantity is added and the inventory starts being replenished, the demand does not stop. The demand is ongoing and therefore the inventory does not increase at a rate of P. Its net rate of increase is P minus D. Q by P is the time over which replenishment lasts because Q is the ordered quantity and P is the rate of replenishment. So the time over which replenishment happens is Q by P. And therefore the maximum inventory level Q max that is reached will be Q by P, which is the time over which inventory is added into P minus D. P minus D is the net rate of increase of the inventory. So this will become Q into P minus D divided by P. And as before, the average inventory level is half of that maximum level. It's Q max by 2, which is Q into P minus D divided by 2P. So from this, we can compute the holding cost. The holding cost will essentially be CH is Q into P minus D divided by 2P into small CH. The order cost is the same as that in the basic EOQ model. It just depends on the number of orders we do in a unit period of time multiplied by the cost per order, which is D by Q into CO. The total inventory cost per unit time will therefore become C equal to Q into P minus D by 2P into small ch plus D by Q into small co. So now to find the optimal order quantity, we set DC by DQ equal to zero and we get this. Q star is square root of 2D co by ch into square root of P divided by P minus D. So you can see that as compared to the basic EOQ formula, which had only this portion, we now have an additional portion in this formula and this is a factor with which the earlier portion gets multiplied. So Q star essentially is changing from what it was in the basic EOQ model by a factor of square root of P by P minus D. Since P is always greater than D, the optimal order quantity Q star is greater than that of the basic EOQ model given the same D, CO and CH. So why is P always greater than D? This is because the rate at which replenishment has to happen once the inventory becomes zero necessarily has to be greater than the demand rate if a stock out has to be prevented. If P were to be less than D, then there would be a stock out. So therefore, P necessarily has to be greater than D. In the extreme case, P would be exactly equal to D. And this is not considered here because it's an extreme theoretical kind of a case when there is continuous flow. Uh, as the replenishment happens, demand is happening, so then no inventory will build at all. It is possible in a theoretical discussion, but in practical life, P will always be greater than D. So what essentially is happening now is that if you look at the Q star formula, P by P minus D uh, will be necessarily greater than 1. And therefore, the Q star that we get here will be greater than the Q, Q star that we would get with the basic EOQ model as we just saw. And therefore, gradual replenishment means a larger order size and hence fewer orders. So given the same demand, 
given the same holding cost, ordering cost and everything, if the system were to switch from the basic EOQ model to the EOQ with gradual replenishment, it would go for larger order sizes and therefore given that the demand is the same, the number of orders per unit time will come down. Next, let's look at the maximum inventory level reached. Q star max will be Q star into P minus D by P and that is this expression square root of 2D CO by CH into square root of P minus D by P. Now you can see that what has happened between these two formulae uh, is that the factor here uh, has basically become the inverse. So, the, so now we are multiplying by square root of P minus D by P. Earlier in the basic EvoQ model we had only this part of the formula for the Q star max. So now the factor which is less than 1, you can see P minus D is always less than P and therefore this factor is always less than 1 and therefore the maximum inventory level that we reach will be less than that we would reach with the basic EvoQ model the maximum as well as the average on hand inventory. So what does this mean? This means that gradual replenishment approach brings down the overall inventory level in the system. So going forward, we can also make these observations. When P is much, much greater than D, when P is very large as compared to D, this model approaches the basic EVOQ model. So we can visualize this. In the basic EVOQ model, we said that the replenishment happens instantaneously. So instantaneous replenishment is as good as saying that P tends to infinity. And at the other extreme, when P is approaching D, okay, at one extreme P is much, much greater than D. At the other extreme P is approaching D. Like we said, P cannot be less than D, but in the extreme case, P is equal to D. So when P is approaching D, then Q star, uh, the optimal order quantity tends to infinity. If you go to the formula, you can see that. But Q star max, interestingly, tends to zero. So let's visualize what this means. The model approaches that of the continuous flow with zero weighting and no reordering. It's as if one large long-term order has been placed in the system. So it's like you decided to continuously produce uh, a quantity which will be almost equal to the rate of production will be almost equal to the rate of consumption, right? And you, you go on supplying this, you don't order again and again. So you go on supplying, the producer goes on supplying this and the supply comes just in tandem with the demand. The demand and uh, the supply are nearly in sync with each other, so no inventory practically builds up. Okay, so this is an extreme case and this is the ideal for what is called as the lean thinking approach. The lean thinking approach tries to move towards this, this kind of a practice where there is just in time replenishment. Coming to the costs. The optimal holding cost per unit time, capital CHR, by applying the basic formula comes to this expression. Similarly, the optimal order cost per unit time comes to this expression and you can see again that the two are equal, the same expression comes for both the optimal holding cost as well as the optimal order cost per unit time. And the optimal total inventory cost per unit time is the sum of those two and you get this expression. So what do we observe here? So we observe that all the costs here are having a formula similar to that of the basic EOQ model, but the additional factor of square root of P minus D by P is present. And since this factor, like we discussed before, is less than one, all the costs here in the gradual replenishment model are lower than those in the basic EOQ model. Again, looking at the extremes, when P is much, much greater than D, the costs will tend towards that of the basic EOQ model. Okay, this factor will tend towards one, and then you would get the same cost as in the basic EOQ model. But when P approaches D at this extreme, then they tend towards zero. So in the continuous flow situation, when there is no, uh, you know, piling up of inventory, naturally the inventory cost will tend towards zero. And like we said, we're not going to order again and again. It's as if one large order has been placed with the supplier. And so the inventory keeps flowing. Okay, now what is the time between consecutive orders? That is given by this formula. We get that by substituting Q star in the general formula Q by D. And this is the expression we get. And here we see that the optimal cycle time is more than that in the basic EOQ model. Naturally, because we are ordering larger quantities now. So when you're ordering larger quantities, the time between consecutive orders will come down. And looking at the extremes, once again, we can see that when P is much, much greater than D, the cycle time approaches that of the basic EOQ model. And P, when P is tending towards D, it approaches infinity. Why does it approach infinity? It's like one large order has been placed in the beginning itself at some infinitely distant point of time in the past and then onwards no more orders are placed. 
it's like ongoing replenishment is happening okay so these are extreme situations and you must be able to visualize them in your mind as you watch this video okay now let's look at another example so imagine that there's an SKU which is numbered as 893 and it's produced at a set steady rate of 180 units a month on an ongoing basis by a vendor for a washing machine manufacturer so this vendor is manufacturing this SKU and supplying to the washing machine manufacturer okay now part Y is a component of SKU 893 and it's produced by the vendor for making SKU 893 and it's produced internally each unit of the SKU requires two units of Y the unit value of Y is an estimated rupees 720 after the order is received Y is produced at a rate of 60 units a day at a different work center from that which produces SKU 893 producing Y each time involves a changeover cost because it's produced internally we call this as changeover cost or setup cost it's not the order cost which we would which we would refer to when we are talking when we are talking about acquiring from a supplier so this involves a changeover cost of rupees 676 each time there is an order this cost is incurred currently the manager computes the EOQ of Y produces that quantity and then transfers the entire lot to the input buffer of SKU 893 so there are two different machines one producing part Y and another for producing SKU 893. So SKU 893 has its input inventory buffer. So currently the parts are produced whenever ordered at, at this separate work center and then transferred as an entire lot, whatever ordered quantity has been, uh, has been produced. That entire order quantity is transferred to the input buffer of SKU 893 and added to it at one point of time. So the vendor works 30 days a month and the annual holding cost is taken to be 15% of the unit value. So all this is given to us we are asked to answer how many units of part Y are currently produced, how many times a year is Y produced, what are the average and maximum inventory levels of Y at SKU's inventory buffer and what are the inventory related costs. Now after answering these questions there is a additional portion in this problem which says there is a proposal to switch to a practice of transferring the units of Y as and when they are produced instead of waiting for the entire quantity of Y to be produced at this work center and then transferring the entire quantity to SKU 893's input buffer and then adding all of it at one shot. We are told that the proposal is to transfer as and when it is produced uh, and then consumed as the consumption rate requires. So if we do that, how will that change the values in A to D? Can we compare the two sets of values? Okay, now I request you to pause the video and if you wish, go back and read the problem again and solve it. And after you solve it, uh, you, you, you will see that you have used values like this. D is equal to 360 units per month because we said that each unit of SKU 893 requires two units of part Y. So 180 into 2, 360 units per month. The order cost is 676 per unit order. The holding cost is got by again converting from annual to monthly, 720 into 0.15 divided by 12. That is 9 rupees per unit per month. The production rate is 60 units per day or 1,800 units per month. And once again, in case some of you have not understood, let me point out that this rate that is mentioned here is the rate at which the quantity ordered will be produced whenever and only whenever it is ordered for replenishment. It should not be taken to mean that a production of 60 units takes place on an ongoing basis, unlike the demand, which happens at a given rate of D on an ongoing basis. So because there is this confusion, sometimes people think that P also is an ongoing thing like D, but no, P refers to the production that happens only when uh, the, the order has been placed and it happens at this rate, at the given rate. Okay, now by using these input values, these output, outputs are computed. Here, uh, all the inventory measures that we are asked to compute are listed. In the first, in the second column, the current practice with the basic EOQ which the manager is doing, what outputs will he get? what output inventory measures will he get that is listed here the third column lists what would happen if the proposed system is followed the proposed system of gradual replenishment and the fourth column lists the change percentage now if you look at this carefully so we will see that the economic order quantity will increase from something like 232 to 260 roughly a 12 percent increase so like we said in gradual replenishment we order larger quantities the n star or the number of times that is or the order is placed will come down 
So earlier we were ordering, uh, in the current system we are ordering 1.55, in the proposed system it would come down to 1.38. So the effort required to order comes down. The time between consecutive orders goes up. It is currently 0.65, it will become 0.72, that many months. Okay, now look at the maximum inventory level. The maximum and average inventory both will come down by about 10.5, 10.5%, right? So both of them come down. The holding costs, in, uh, order cost, inventory cost, all of them also come down. So earlier, or the current system has this much cost, but in the proposed system, the, the, the reduction is about 10 to 11%. So doing these calculations and going through the logic of this model helps us to realize that when we are trying to uh, you know, move from a, from a very basic situation whereby we produce all the quantity at one shot and then transfer it to wherever it's required at one shot and then consume it over time, a model whereby continuous production and replenishment happens is better from the perspective of saving inventory cost or more broadly speaking, better from the perspective of managing inventory in the system. So the lean approach, which uh, was made popular by Toyota and is today increasingly being adopted by several companies, tries to move towards a system like this, where a more continuous form of inventory movement is, is sought after rather than keeping piles and piles of inventory and using that those piles. So the idea is to make it more continuous and fluid in its, in its presence in the organization. So with this, we will uh, conclude the video on the EOQ with gradual operation. Thank you.